All right, so in this problem, we have a cable stayed bridge. The right hand reaction on this, we're going to assume, is taken care of by the support on the right hand side, so that only the back stay and the support in the middle are actually carrying the weight of the bridge structure. Now, the back stay can be assumed to have a pin connection, and so the line of action is already known parallel to that line. And because it's sloped, we have both horizontal and vertical reactions. And if we have a vertical reaction at that support, we have to have a vertical reaction at the other support. And the only other place that the horizontal action of the cable can go is into the right-hand support reaction. So now we'll find the reactions by summing moments use the center support, which I'm calling R right, and looking clockwise, everything that rotates around that, which includes the 20 kip forces each at 20 feet, 20 feet for the first, 40 feet for the second, 60 feet for the third, and then that rotational tendency is balanced only by the vertical component of the left hand end. So we do our calculations. First term is 400 kip feet, second is 800 kip feet, the third is 1200 kip feet, and then the distance is 30 feet to the left hand end. Kind of out of space, so I'll go down below. So the left-hand vertical reaction then is 2400 kip feet divided by 30 feet, and we get 80 kips as our vertical reaction at the left-hand side. Once we have that, the only remaining force is the right-hand vertical reaction, the only remaining vertical force that is. So I'm summing forces vertically here. We have the 320 kip loads acting downward the left-hand vertical reaction acting downward plus the right-hand vertical reaction as the only upward force. So that's actually 60 kips, 20, 40, 60 is downward load, minus the 80 kip left-hand reaction, and that tells us the right-hand reaction is 140 kips vertically upward. Now what it would want to do is find the magnitude of the horizontal reaction that is induced by the sloping component of the diagonal backstay. That backstay is at a ratio of 1 to 4 slope, so by ratio the left hand vertical reaction by ratio to 4 is the same as the left hand horizontal reaction by ratio to 1. So the left-hand vertical reaction is 20 kips, one-fourth of the vertical component. So now if we sum forces horizontally, there are only two horizontal forces. The one we just calculated that's generated by the sloping cable, and then the only place to balance that is the horizontal component of the right-hand reaction, and that's also 20 kips. So now at this point, we want to label our diagram, put A, B, C, D between each of our loads and reactions, and here I'm splitting up the components of the vertical reaction, the horizontal vertical components. Uh, notice that A goes all the way around the perimeter because there's no loads acting there. Everything from the left hand horizontal to the vertical load we're using a scale of 30 kips, downward three loads at 20 kips, so that's our total load right there, 20, 40, 60.
Now, to go from D to E, we're going 140 kips upward from point D. So we mark that on our 30 scale. There's point E. Now EF is 20 kips horizontally to the right. And then F to G is 80 kips downward vertically. That's the vertical component of our left-hand reaction. And then G to A is the 20 kips horizontally. That's the horizontal component of the sloping reaction. So now what I'm highlighting here, this is the load line. This is the all of the acting forces and reacting forces on the structure. With this, now we can calculate the member forces. So we're going to do this graphically. First off, let's look at the, uh, the sloping reactions. So D to F is this full diagonal. So if I didn't have an E in there, we wouldn't have A to G and F to, uh, F to G. So FG, AG, that's the same as A to F. That's the actual force in AF, which you see it matches exactly the slope of the, the cable itself, the backstay, which it has to because the line of action of a force in a cable has to be parallel to the cable because it's flexible. And we can see there's embedded in the diagram the horizontal and vertical components of both the left-hand reaction and the right-hand reaction. So overall, this whole long tail here, that's the vertical component of the right-hand reaction. And then the diagonal from D to F, again, that's the sloping. So now we're looking for the intersection points of D1 and F1, C2 and F1, and one, two. B3 and A3. So we have the horse line, horizontal line D1 intersecting the sloping line of F1. We get the slope from the form diagram starting at F, projecting down that's line F1. So point one lies at the intersection of D1 and F1. So now C1 is a horizontal line, so we'll extend that. Same with B1, I mean C2 and B3. So 1, 2 follows from point 1 till it intersects with C2. Sometimes you have to rotate your page. You run out of space on the end, which is what happened to me. So I go from point 1 until it intersects with D, or C rather, C. I'm looking for point 2. C2, there's point 2. 2, 3 goes from point 2 to B3. And there we have point 3. And then B, B3. And then 3A is the last line. And it should match. We always want to go back to zero. So there we go, 3A. Erase some of the extra lines. And there's a force polygon at a scale of 1 to 30. That means 1 inches 30 kips. So now we can re read the force magnitudes. D1 comes out to about 90 kips. That's compressive. C2 comes out to 71 kips, also compressive. And B3 
comes out as about 40 kips compressive. A3 is the diagonal cable stay at the outside edge, about 42 kips. 2-3, the center cable stay, about 35 kips. All these are in tension. 2-1, the innermost cable stay, about 29 kips, also tension. We read the sense of this the same way as we do with a truss. So F1, that's the mast force. This is the highest force in the entire structure. All of the horizontal and vertical components have to come together into this mast. And so that has a total force of 165 kips, the highest of all. The backstay is actually the same as the total true reaction force on the left-hand side. That comes out to about 83 kips. So F to A is the same if we look at the geometry of that A to F. So once again, to read the sense of the force, we look clockwise the name. It goes A to F, and then A to F transferred back to the form diagram goes away from the support, therefore it is in tension.